Morning, Darcy. Good morning. Morning, Flynn. Okay, hey, we'll be starting the class in a few minutes. Okay, let's get it started. Um, this week, um, we will be uh, conducting a, an exam preparation session. So we have six hours, including all the lectures and demonstration hours dedicated to that exam preparation. So here we are. Let's start with uh, the problem number one. Just to remind everyone that your final exam is mainly concentrated on the topic we discuss after the mid-semester, but some topics uh, are uh, unavoidable. So we, you don't you do need to know about the free body diagram. You do need to know about the forces, vectors, but almost everything would be two-dimensional beam. And you'll be asked to find either the internal forces, reactions, uh, internal stresses. And in some cases, you have to plot the shear force diagram. You have to evaluate the shear moment and normal forces at given point. 
So the first problem we have here is an example that you don't need to plot the shear force diagram or bending moment. All you need, because you've been asked about the internal forces evaluated at some certain selected point, all you need is just um, maybe using the method of free body diagram. That is the best approach. So morning, Chase Al. So for, for, for a question like this in exam, when you are being asked about the internal force or internal loading at certain points, instead of plotting the shear force diagram bending moment, what you do is you just make a section at that point and then using the free body diagram either from the left-hand side or right-hand side, that's the easiest approach to find the internal forces. So let's get started with the first problem set from exam preparation set, all right? So that is the question. Let me bring that into a, a scrap paper so we can annotate on that. Okay, here what you want is the shear force and normal force bending moment at do these two points. Okay, and I think you've been provided with the right answer. So you know, um, let's find this at point D. That is only for point D, which you want to find find them. Okay, and you've been given all the final answers here. Let me bring the final answers just in case if we have to check them. Okay, first thing first, I the first step is I can't get this one started without finding the reaction forces. Okay, so, so reaction forces, how do we do that? That is by just um, temporarily, I have to lump the distributed force. Otherwise, I won't be able to find the reactions um, without integration. So this is simply when when I replace that distributed load with a single point load with a, with a line of action, that is I'm doing the integration of this distributed force. So I know that this special shape, the triangle, um, the total force due to that distributed load is equal to area of that triangle. So the area of the triangle is, that is equal to my resultant force. Okay, that is equal to three, times three divided by two. And that is um, 4.5, 4 4.5 kilonewton. All right, so if I'm going to find out the forces at D, perhaps, easier to find the reaction at B. So there are two reactions here, one of them being at A. The second one being reaction at point B, B of Y. And to find out the internal forces at D, uh, I told you with the method of free body diagram, you either use, I mean, you make, a section here, and then you have a choice. Either your free body diagram would be the right-hand side, or it would be the left-hand side. It is obvious that the right-hand side free body diagram is easier, and for that reason, I'm only interested to calculate BY. I don't need to find AY. That, even without knowing that, we can complete the problem, okay? so. Anyone can suggest how do we go with finding the reaction at BY? What is the best step to find the reaction at BY? 
So first thing first, I need to replace that point load here. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So 4.5, I should position that right in the centroid of that triangle. And the centroid of this triangle is one third from the apex. So the, the height of that triangle is three meter. One third from that, this is like so. So I'm just putting nine, or that is 4.5 kilonewton here. And the distance from this edge, that is going to be one meter. Okay. So now with that, to find by I'm going to take the condition of rotation with respect to the A equal to zero. And why did I choose A? Because that way I don't have to calculate AY. AY won't contribute toward the rotation. And I only have to include BY as an unknown. And that makes the solution easier. So BY rotation due to the BY that is in the positive rotation direction. So that is plus BY. And the arm of rotation is three meter plus one meter is four meter. Four times by and then 4.5 makes a negative rotation minus that is the entire length is four meters so so take away one meter that is three three times 4.5 in a negative direction and finally i have a six kilonewton which is also in the negative rotation minus six, and the arm of rotation is 0.5 meter. That is equal to zero, all right? And now this equation only has one unknown. And if I solve that, by is calculated to be three kilonewton. All right. Now I have the BY. How do I find the internal force at B? OK, so like I said, there is an option. We could section the beam at that point and just look at the free body diagram of the right hand side or left hand side. So I'm, I decided to do that off the right hand side because that is far easier. So in the exam, make sure you include all the free body diagrams and illustrations. Otherwise, uh, you might not get the score for uh, in case if your answers are wrong, but I want to see all the details anyway. So if I include the right-hand side free body diagram, that would be a portion of the beam between point B and D, right? So let's write this on B. And this is D. And then that is only include a portion of the distributed load. So that portion of distributed load is for 1.5 meter. So 1.5 meter, the area on there, uh, so let's, let's call this a small area. So this is a small area here. That is equal to 1.5. So what about the height? What, you, what about the height of this, this base? So if at this end, that is 3 kilonewton, at this point, D is going to be half of that, because this is symmetric, right? So similar triangle between the little triangle and the large triangle, it tells me the distribution maximum at point D is 1.5 kilonewton. So this is 1.5 kilonewton. All right. So I use that in calculating the area. That is 1.5 multiplied by base, which is 1.5 divided by 2. That is the area. So this one, that is 1.5 squared 
divided by two is 1.125. And the unit is kilonewton. So that is my resultant, which I should include here. But that resultant has to go at the centroid of this area. So centroid of this area is one third of the apex from the apex. So this is 1.5. One third of that is half a meter from here and one meter from there. And the magnitude for that is 1.125 kilonewton. And also, I need to include the reaction force here. So that is 3 kilonewton. OK, the key is. How do I include the internal forces at the section which we just cut? So section D, that is where your internal forces develop. And then I remember from the convention, you remember there is a convention. If I'm looking into the right-hand side free body diagram, my positive shear should point upward. So this is V of D. And my positive bending moment is clockwise, that is M of D. And also the positive normal force would point toward the left, that is N of D. So it's, it's obvious that N of D is equal to zero. So that is the first part of the answer. We just got it. And what about V of D? If I want to find V of D, I have to apply the net forces in the y direction equal to zero. That is V of D positive minus 1.125 plus three is equal to zero. And then that uh, obviously, if I solve that V of D is minus 1.875. Why minus? Because I assume this is upward, but then the result of calculation is telling me the VD is uh, pointing down. And the unit is kilonewton. OK, now the last step is I want to evaluate the bending moment at D. So from the very same free body diagram, it is best if I take condition of rotation with respect to the D equal to zero. Because in that case, if my VD is calculated, uh, I made a mistake in finding that, uh, that won't come into my calculation. So I would find the M of D by applying the condition of rotation with respect to point D. So let's write that one, net rotation with respect to point D with positive direction equal to zero. And now looking to this free body diagram, VD doesn't make any rotation. M of D is negative minus M of D. And then 1.25, 1.125, that makes a negative rotation minus 1.125. And the arm of rotation is 1. And finally, RB is making a positive rotation. That is plus. 3 multiplied by 1.5, that is arm of rotation. So if I solve this equation, I would find the bending moment to be M of D is positive 3.9375. And then this being positive, it indicates that the assumed direction for rotation is uh, correct. All right, so that is the first problem. Uh, problem number one, we solved this. And now this is your turn. Give me a feedback. Uh, 
Did you follow the solution? Do you want me to explain more or just any feedback would be appreciated? Or any question? Okay. No question. I assume that everyone is fine with that. Let me go to the next problem. And this problem, um, a word of warning that was included in uh, past exams. So I would like to ask the, the people attending the class, give this a go first before we try to solve that together. All right, let, let me bring that into a scrap page. Okay, here, this is a mechanism. You have a motor at the left, which applies a clockwise hook to the end of the cable. That cable is passing through two pulleys. And then on the right-hand side, you have a counterweight hanging from, and the other end of the beam is connected to the wall. All right, so here, uh, we have to start by finding the reactions. Yeah, I think a difficult part of this one is to find the rotation, uh, for finding the reactions. So two reactions at VA, and also the tension inside the cables. Okay, so. Just by the symmetrical consideration, I see that there are two tensile loads applied at the pulleys. Both of them, they have to be equal. Otherwise, the system would move. So I know for the fact that the tensile load in both end of the pulleys at here and here, the tensile loads should, should be equal. So then, with my free body diagram having two tensile force applied here and there, and given the geometrical symmetry, that is from that the support is right in the middle and everything is symmetric. The geometry is symmetric, the load are symmetric. And then what can I conclude is that link here is not playing any role. That, that's like a dummy member. It won't come into the equation. So I can write just by symmetry. So from here, you can conclude that AX is equal to AY, that is equal to zero. All right. I mean, feel free to make a free body diagram. If you make a free body diagram, what you get is just you have T, T, B, Y, and here you got A, X, A, Y. All right. So because these two T's are equal, if I take, um, well, I know for the fact that AX is equal to zero, that's the only horizontal force. And then what about AY? I know that here taking rotation with respect to point B, net rotation with respect to point B equal to zero. That is plus T 
key times, tension times, arm of rotation. From here to there, arm of rotation is 2.1. And then this one makes the same in a negative direction, minus P times 2.1. And then that is plus AY multiplied by 2 plus 2 is 4. But these two terms, they cancel each other. And therefore, AY multiplied by 4 equal to 0. Therefore, AY is equal to 0. So that is how you can solve this. If you don't want to consider the symmetry, you want to know why AX, AY are 0, that, that's the proof. OK? So now you don't need the, um, just let me clean that, that proof. All right. It means I can easily ignore the right-hand side link. That's not a beam, that's a link. And how do I know that this is a link? Because there is no loading applied between A and C. OK? So the middle portion of the beam between two pulleys that is subjected to the bending. And here you want to find out the or so point D it is a hanging weight. So I, I can calculate the external load due to this one. So the external load due to the weight of this counterweight that is three hundred kilogram multiplied by 9.8. All right, so that is 2.943 kilonewton. And I can assume that the very same force is applied here. These are equal because, because the pulleys are frictionless. Okay. But for now, let me just make my free body diagram at point C because you want to know the internal forces at point C. So if I do a section, an envelope, write this one. Anything inside that envelope, that would make my free body diagram. So let's let's make that free body diagram. So I have a pulley. I'm just making this a little bit larger deliberately to emphasize that the radius of this pulley is not negligible. So I got 2.9. Four, three kilonewton applied here. That is the center of rotation. And then my beam is being sectioned at point C. So at point C, also, I'm going to have the same tension here, 2.943 kilonewton here. And then I notice that this dimension is. 0.1 meter. It's a large pulley. And then what happens inside the beam? So you're cutting through here. That the internal forces should be exposed. And since this is a right hand side free body diagram, I remember from the conventions we had on the right hand side, the positive normal force would be toward the left. The positive bending moment would be clockwise. And the positive shear force that acts upward. So now all you have to do is to solve that as free by diagram. But taking taking note about these pulley dimension, I know that, for example, from C 
to that center, this is uh, simply, I mean, that distance is what? That distance is 1.5, take away uh, two, that is half a meter, and half a meter plus 0.1, that dimension here is half a meter plus 0.1, that is 0.6. Okay, what about that dimension from here to here? That is 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Now, this grid by diagram, I can easily store for the forces horizontally, net forces horizontally equal to zero. That would tell me N of C is equal to minus 2.943 kilonewton. And then I can apply net forces vertically equal to zero. And the only horizontal force I have, that is the shear force and the, the force inside the pulley. So therefore, my shear force at point C, that is 2.943 kilonewton. And finally, to find out the bending moment at that point, I do need to take net rotation with respect to point C. And that being positive direction. So VC doesn't make any rotation. MC doesn't make any rotation, but MC, that's the negative rotation minus MC. And then that tension force here that makes a positive rotation plus 2.943 and the arm of rotation is 0.1 and then this is with respect to point c but these 2.943 with respect to point c it has a larger arm of rotation that is minus 2.943 in this case the arm of rotation is 0.6 so if I solve that, my bending moment is calculated as M of C is equal to minus 1.47 kilonewton meter. Okay, please note this is a very important question for the exam. And okay, any questions? Um, so, um, should it be 0.5? Okay, you're referring to chase up 0.5. No, this is not 0.5 because because 0.5 is measured from the center of the pulley to point B, but then you have another 0.1, which is the radius of the pulley. It goes toward the right. Can can you see that? Do you want me to zoom in? Let me zoom in, maybe you can see that better. So let me zoom in here. So now, 0.5, this is between B and center of the pulley. And then the cable is 0.1 meter further toward the right. Can you see that, Chesa? Okay, yeah, thank you. This is the point. That this, is, this is why this question was in the exam. This, has a, this is a tricky question. People 
I don't appreciate that that radius. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jay Sal, for the question. At least I know <laughs> you're listening. Uh, but that was a good question. Thank you for that. Let's go to the next. Um, Problem, that is problem number three. Problem number three. So problem number three, a word of warning, that's a complex problem. I don't expect you to answer something like this during the exam, but, but if you understand this good enough, then it means you are well prepared for the exam. So I'm going to bring that third problem into a scrap page where we can go through the detailed solution. All right, you want to find the internal forces at point E and at point F. All right, for that, I mean, we do need to find the reactions. At least one reaction we, we need to know, depending whether you want to move from the left to right or right to left. Okay, the first thing is we have to categorize the type of a structure, okay? I can see that um, AB is a beam. It, it has a fixed end at the wall, and then it can't be a bar because it has a load right in the middle. What about the middle part? The middle part that has um, one pin at the left and one roller support or slot guidance at point C, and it has a point load right in the middle. So again, BC cannot be a bar, this is a beam. And finally, CD is also a beam. So you have three beams here, and obviously there are lots of unknowns, and it's if, if I decide to release the entire structure from the support, that is not solvable. Why? So if I choose my free body diagram like that by releasing this from the wall, this is not solvable. Because by doing that, I get three unknowns at A, vertical horizontal rotation, and also three at the right, vertical horizontal rotation. So six unknowns. This is a two-dimensional problem. You only can handle three unknowns, not, not six of them, okay? So that free body diagram is not solvable. Also, if I take my free body diagram for A to B, that, that's what happens. I will have three at the left, two at the right, five. That is not solvable. If I take this one, that is three at the right and one at the left, four, that is not solvable. So. The only option I have is I can take my free body diagram for here. Okay, let's see what happens. If I take that free body diagram, releasing the middle part, that is solvable. Why? I show you why. So here I decide to release the middle part. So that middle part has a hinge support at B that would develop two resistance, let's call this B of Y and B of X. And what about C? C is a guided support. It only resists against the vertical motion. It won't resist for the axial motion. So that is C of Y. And then this force, I can break that into two components. The vertical component would be 1,200 multiplied by 4 divided by 5.
Okay, so that is one and So four to five is like eight to 10, right? So this is like eight to 10. So that's 120 multiplied by eight. So that is 960. 960 is the vertical component. And then you will have one horizontal one which is 1,200 multiplied by three over five. Okay, three over five is like six over 10. So that is like 120 times six. That is 720. Okay, so we break the forces into two components. And then by doing this, I'm able to find uh, this free body diagram, it has only three unknowns, one, two, three, and that is quite solvable. Okay, so let's solve this one. Okay, here I find B of X is All right, now this is solvable, and by doing that, we find out the reaction forces. So B of Y, um, just in my solution, I, I assume that B of X is toward the left. So, so let's, let's follow the same convention. Um, So that, that is obvious, isn't it? Because, because we know the only horizontal force is toward the right, this one should be toward the left. So that gives me B of X is equal to 720, and the unit is Newton. And then B of Y, that is 320 Newton. And also, C of Y, that is 614 Newton. Okay, so that is the first step. We need that first step before the problem can solve. Okay, so from here, I can go on and all right, so, so now. I can release the structure at point F and so if I know C, uh, I can release that portion of the beam and simply find the reaction at A, okay? So let me make my second free body diagram between A and C. So that is my first free body diagram. This is my first free body diagram. My, my second free body diagram is just between A and C. So C, that reaction force, I have to reverse it.
or I can simply, now that I know the reactions, uh, I think it's, it's wiser to do it at point B. So I release my structure between A and B. So that is my second free body diagram. Because, because I know the forces at B. All I have to do is I have to reverse the forces at B. Okay, so this is right to left. I reverse that. This is left to right. So I 720 here. And then BY is upward. I reverse that, make this downward here. That is 320. All right. With that free body diagram, also I have a 800 Newton here. And then at the left, the forces are AY and AX and bending moment. I assume that my bending moment is in that direction. It won't make any difference, but let's just make an assumption. So from here, you can solve your MA. That is MA minus 1,200. So let us do it again. So minus, this is plus, plus MA minus 800. And the armor position is 1.5. Minus 320, and that is 2.5. That is equal to zero. So this one, if I solve my MA, becomes 2,000 Newton meter. And also, I find the AY to be equal to 1,120 Newton, and AX would be 720. Okay, so now this one, that one, that one. And finally, I'm going to make my free body diagram between A and F. A and F. So if I make a free body diagram between A and F, that is how my free body diagram looks like. That's the third free body diagram. So first would be a long beam. At A, I would include the forces. That is 720. This is point A. Then vertically, that is 1,120. And rotationally, that is 2,000. And also, I have a 800 Newton here. And I have these forces in component 960. And 720. And then point C, that's internal load, we don't care. So F, between F and C, there would be a distributed load, which I have to, a portion of distributed load, which I have to include, that becomes 600 Newton. If you wonder where this comes from, that's the area of the rectangle, that is 400 as an intensity multiplied by the length, which is uh, 3 by 2 or 1.5. Okay. And also at the section of F, there is, because this is a left hand side 3 by diagram, according to convention, VF positive that is pointing down. And the bending moment positive that is counterclockwise, and the axial positive, that's going to be like so. So this is obvious 720, 720 cancel. My NF 
becomes zero. And all I have to find is V of F and M of F. So let's start with V of F. So net forces vertically equal to zero. That is 1,120 plus minus 800 minus 960 minus 600 minus VF is equal to zero. So therefore my VF becomes 1,240 Newton. And then I write my rotation equation by taking rotation with respect to point F. So I take rotation with respect to the F, making sure in case if my V calculation is not correct, the calculation of MF won't be affected by that mistake. So that's why I took it with respect to the F. So that is MF positive plus 600 arm of rotation is 3 by 4 or that is 0.75, plus 960 arm of rotation is 2.5 meter, and finally 800, the arm of rotation is 5.5. And then there is a 2000, which is a rotation at A, and finally there is a negative rotation due to the reaction at A, that is 1, 1, 2, 0, oh times seven, that's the length equal to zero. So from here, the bending moment as F can be calculated. MF is equal to 1,410 Newton meter. Okay, so that's the entire solution in case if you want to take a snapshot. Questions, any questions? Uh, 3.5, okay. No, that is 3 or 4, 2.5, 5.5. Thank you, Chesa. All right, no question, let's move to the next problem. <laughs> so again, this problem is calculate the internal forces at a, at a certain point. And for all these type of problems, we will be using the method of free body diagram. And then we don't use the method of equation. Method of equation is only more appropriate when you want to find the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. If you want to find the point values, you want to evaluate the internal force at a certain point, the best approach is the free body diagram. And that is what we do here. Okay, so let me grab So here, please note that point D is located just left of the roller support. So why, why that makes a uh, difference? Why is it important? Because before and after the, the shear force 
won't be the same. So here, D before before D, there is no reaction force. After D, that reaction acting like a discontinuity to the shear force diagram. So maybe once we get to the solution, you find this um, easier. So both D and E are of interest. You want to evaluate this at D and E. Okay, first thing first, I need to find the reactions. So for, for doing that, let me release the entire beam. So that is point A. This is point B. And that's five kilonewton. I would break that into two components. I write this as a vertical force of three and a horizontal force of four. So that is using that triangle, you can easily break five kilonewton into two components. Okay, and then what happens to point B, that's a roller support only resistance in the y direction. And what am I missing here? So I'm missing two forces. Well, first of all, there are A of y here and A of x here. Between A to B, you have to find the area of that rectangle, which is two times three, this is six, six kilonewton here. And then between B and C, there is a triangle. The area of the triangle is three times two divided by two, that is three. So three kilonewton that is one third of the side, which is three, is one meter from here to there. Okay, so now the easiest way to solve this free body diagram, I mean, there are one, two, three unknowns. That free body diagram is solvable. So the smartest approach is to take rotation with respect to the A. In that way, I'm going to get rid of these two unknowns. And let's, let's write that one with this direction being positive. That is minus six times 1.5 plus three times by, that's a positive rotation, and minus six times one, six times, yeah, that is, Yeah, please note, I mean, I, I just forgot to include, there is a point cooped here. So we have to include that point cooped here, that is six. So that is minus six. And then minus 
three, and that three is three times six. Arm of rotation is six. It is equal to zero. So from here, I can work out B of Y that is equal to 15 kilonewtons. Okay, any question? Is that clear? Who wants me to explain this again? Is that clear? All right, so now we find the reaction. Thank you, Shaisal. Now we found the reaction. Uh, let's start with internal forces at E. Let's find the internal forces at E. Well, E is quite simple. If I want to do that at E, it would be much smarter if I take my free body diagram just, just here. Right, so let's let's do that. I make a second pre by diagram like so. So still that is point C. I'm keeping the forces resolved. That is C of X is equal to four kilonewton and C of Y that is three kilonewton. And then I only have a portion of triangle. That, that portion of triangle, what is the length of this, this one? Because this is right in the middle, that length is expected to be half of that one. Half of this is half of two, one. One kilonewton per meter here. So the area of this triangle, this is the resultant. So one times 1.5, that is 1.5. 1.5 kilonewton, and that is one third from the apex. So this, this is going to be 0.5 meter, 0.5 from here. And then there are three forces developed here, but because this is a right-hand side free body diagram, I remember in the right-hand side free body diagram, the positive shear that is upward, that is V of E, and positive bending is clockwise. M of E and positive normal force is toward the right. So from here, I gather N of E is equal to four kilonewton and net force is vertically equal to zero. That is minus three, minus six, minus VD equal to zero. So therefore, V of D is equal to minus nine. And what about M of D? To find M of D, I take rotation with respect to the E equal to zero. Or I can take this with respect to the Yeah, with respect to the E equal to zero, that is minus M of E, minus 0.75 times 0.5, minus three multiplied by 1.5. So that, if I solve the bending moment at point E, is going to be minus 4.875 kilonewton meter. Okay, and now we found the internal forces at point E. The 
next part, you have to do this internal force. You have to find internal force that B, which is on the left side of B. So let me plot a third free body diagram for that. So my third free body diagram would be like so. So that left hand side is A. And so after finding the XPY, I can work out the reactions at A. So AX is four kilonewton toward the left, and AY is three kilonewton downward. So let's let's include them. That is four, and this is three. That is point A. And then I am going to have a point load, which is two times three is six, six kilonewton. And that is 1.5 meter from left. And then I would get three internal forces here. That's the right hand side three by diagram. N of D positive is toward the right, V of D positive is downward. And M of the positive is uh, counterclockwise. So here you find out net forces vertically equal to zero. That is minus three, minus six, minus VD is equal to zero. That give me V of the uh, right. So let's, this is V of E. Uh, minus three, minus six, minus V of D is equal to zero. Therefore, V of D is equal to minus nine. So here I find V of E. That is 3.75 kilometers. Or right. here, the next condition is net rotation net rotation with respect to A equal to zero. That give me six minus six arm of rotation is one point five plus m of d minus minus nine times three is equal to zero. So that I find the bending moment at point D. That is minus eighteen kilonewton meter. Also, V of D we found, and finally, N of D. So, N of D is equal to minus 4. Because that is the only horizontal force we have, 4 and N of D. Okay, in summary, a problem like this one, you have to find out the internal forces at 
specified point. And the best approach for that is by choosing the right free body diagram and solving it. Any question? Okay, I think we're gonna do one more problem today and that, that's enough. So let's do the one more problem. Yep, okay, so that one. So in this case, we are interested in internal forces at F. And E, so these are. Point F, point E. Okay, who can tell me what type of a structure is BC? Is this a beam or is this a bar? Can you imagine that under this loading, BC is going to change? Yes, well done, well done, Chesa. This is a bar. So BC is a bar. So that is the key to solve this problem. If that was a beam, uh, we couldn't solve that. Because this is a bar, we know that only it develops internal forces. Okay? Internal forces, that means no shear force, no bending moment for F. Or, and also, the way it helps me is I know the direction of the force. I know that the force developed inside is only going to be axial. So that force being axial makes this beam solvable. Without that, you cannot solve it. So if I choose my free body diagram, by releasing that member here. Generally speaking, A is a pin, B is a pin, two reactions here, two reactions, four reactions, that is not solvable. But I know that at B, I already know the direction of the force. So this is only one unknown here, two unknown at A. So that makes the problem solvable. So the key to solve this problem, like, like Chase Al said, is to realize that BC is a bar, it's not a beam. Only beam is AB. Okay, so how can I solve this? Let me just, first of all, I release that structure from point C and point A. If I release, that's what I achieve. So here I have N of C, that is how much force developed in N of F, sorry. That is how much force developed here, which is equal to C, FC, or whatever you call it. I mean, let me just, so here I assume that this is N of F. That's axial force inside F. And then over here, I need to substitute that distributed load into a point load. That makes the area of that rectangle is 1.25 multiplied by 1.875 kilonewton and the distance is 
0.75 from here, okay? And then there are two reaction forces, that is A of X, and also A of Y. So let's find out these forces. Net forces horizontally equal to zero. That is AX minus plus N of F multiplied by cos this angle. So cos this angle is what? 1.52, that is a triangle like Three, four, five. Correct. So this is this is theta. So therefore, if I want to resolve that force horizontally, that would be n f time cos theta, which is three or five. Okay, so maybe that is not the right start. Let me start with A, B first. Let's, let's solve with A, B. Okay, I start with A, B. One eight seven five. And that distance is 0.75. And then here, I'm going to have AX and AY. And here, I'm going to have and N F. Okay, first thing first, I could write the condition of rotation with respect to the A equal to zero. That would give me minus 1.875 times 0.75. That is a clockwise rotation, that should be equal to the vertical component of NF with 1.5 as a arm of rotation. That is plus. So NF multiplied, vert resolved vertically, that would be NF times sine theta. Sine theta is 4 over 5 or 0.8. Okay, and the arm of rotation for that is 1.5. So from here, I can calculate the NF. So NF is the axial force developed inside the member, and that
Okay, here I find the force inside F to be FBC that is equal to FBC. That is 1.172. One point one seven two kilonewton, which has two components. I mean, at point B, you can resolve that into B X B Y. Okay, so this is tensile four. This is a tensile force. If I break that into components. B of X would be that multiplied by cos theta, and cos theta is 0.6. And vertically, that is 0.8 times FBC. Okay, now we have the reaction forces there. We easily can work out the free body diagram at point E, right? So E, you can solve this like so. Just I take the right-hand side free body diagram. I put the two forces here. Or I write this axially. So axially speaking, that is point C, I get 1.172 kilonewton here. And then between B and E, so I only have one third of this load. So that is 1.25 multiplied by 0.5. Which is Five six two five kilonewton, and that is point two five measured from here. And then at point E, because this is a beam, there will be three forces because it's a Right hand side free body diagram, my positive V of E would be like that, positive M of E is like that, and positive N of E is like that. Okay, so this free body diagram it has only three unknowns N of E, M of E, V of E, and here these can be solved easily. So here, if I solve that free body diagram, I will get N of E equal to 0 0.705, which is equal to this one. Also, I get M of E is equal to 0.3125 kilonewton meter. And finally, we find V of E minus 0.325. Or right. this problem, the numbers are not very round, they are uh, decimal 
numbers and that, that sometimes could be annoying, but in real life problem, uh, we don't choose the sizes to sure we get the round number. So that's the reality of the life. Um, you might not like it, but that's how it is. Okay, so today we started the exam preparation uh, practice. And we managed to go through a number of selected questions. So more precisely, we solved five problems, five beam problems. All of these problems, uh, we had to find the internal forces inside the <coughs> beam. So because these were specified points, the best option was to make a free body diagram and solve them. If we have to find the maximum, minimum, those type of questions require to plot the shear force diagram, the bending moment diagram, and sometimes the axial uh, force inside the beam. So I think that that is enough for today. Um, we have some more problems remain. I think we are going to take them tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay, any question regarding today problems? Okay, so let me finish the attendance and then we are ready to go. Okay, all done. Any question, Chaisal? No question, thanks, thanks very much. And I look forward to see you tomorrow. Take care, see you tomorrow. Uh, lab extension, just, just bear with me. Let, let me see your email and I can do, yes, yes, I extend this for you. Would be enough to end of this week or you want more extension? End of this week is okay. Okay, I extend this for you until the end of this week. All right, thank you, Chase. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, bye.